Well, let's get more on this now. We're joined by Ali Abunima, co-founder of Electronic Intifada, an online news website, and he's joining us live from Chicago. Mr. Abunima, always good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So pressure coming, pressure on Israel coming from different organizations. We'll start with Airbnb announcing it's removing its listings located in Israeli settlements in the West Bank. Is it a case here of better late than never because different rights organizations have been campaigning for Airbnb to do this for a while? And and now that it is done, how damaging is it for Israel? Well, this is uh, great news, but it's only a first step because the Airbnb announcement doesn't include occupied East Jerusalem and doesn't include the occupied Golan Heights, where it still has many listings. But nonetheless, this is a great first step, and it shows that this global company, which relies on um, its reputation to do business, could not ignore the uh, three-year grassroots campaign all over the world, that it had to stop profiting from the theft of uh, Palestinian land. So uh, it's, it's a sign that the movement is growing, that uh, even major corporations like Airbnb cannot ignore it. And I think it will encourage people to continue to pressure this company and others to end their complicity in profiteering from Israel's violations of international law and war crimes. I think it's also notable that Airbnb is one of the companies that w is reportedly included in a UN database mm -hmm. of companies that do business with the Israeli occupation. That was reported in media last year. Unfortunately, uh, under intense pressure, the UN Human Rights Office has still to publish that database, yeah. but I think that they should do so straight away so that other companies can be held accountable as well. And as you say, Airbnb is a global corporation. What about the Quakers' decision to not invest any of their funds in companies that profit from the occupation? How damaging is that, given the Quakers' moral authority? You know, they were once awarded the Nobel Prize for their opposition to violence in any form. Well, it's great news. This is the Quakers of Britain. So this makes it the first church in the UK to divest from the Israeli occupation. But it's also notable that about five or six churches in the US mm -hmm. had already done so. So it shows this is, a, a again, a growing movement in the Christian uh, uh, community and faith community. I think what's very significant about the Quaker decision is that the Quakers' relief organizations, both the American branch and the British uh, branch, were included on the blacklist published by the Israeli Ministry of Strategic yeah. uh, uh, Affairs a year or so ago, that their members or leaders were not allowed to enter uh, any Israeli-controlled territories. So this decision shows that Israel's bullying, its retaliatory measures and its threats do not deter people from taking moral and ethical uh, actions. And as you know, both of these decisions, Airbnb and uh, the Quakers, really are further signs of failure mm -hmm. of the massive uh, multi-million dollar, hundreds of millions of dollars campaign orchestrated by Israel to smear and sabotage the Palestine solidarity and human rights movement, and to label and defame anyone who stands up to Israel's violations of international law as anti-Semitic. And we saw Israeli ministers spouting off the same kind of empty abuse in the wake of the uh, Airbnb and Quaker yeah. decisions as well. Very typical slanders from Israel, but that's because they don't have an answer to the genuine human rights and international law concerns that are driving these decisions. Mr. Abunima, thank you very much for your time and uh, your analysis on this. We appreciate it as always. Ali Abunima.